if you didn't already know this about me, I love the ocean. So I love being on it. And one day I hope to own a sailboat. But till then, other people's sailboats. Wow. Help fill that need. <laughs> Excited to take off on this Good trip. Catch. The sunset, the, gradient, the beautiful sunset. Beautiful. And look, there's Maggie, the harbor seal who lives in this bay. So, the night before, we got all of our stuff, packed it all up, our food, our clothes, brought it down to the boat. This is our first time being on this boat, so there was a little bit of orientation. And preparation. <laughs> Put the holes in the hole. Yep, it's in there. Ready for water. A boat often has a lot of onboard water tanks. Yep, filling up the water and tank. And this one being an older boat had its quirks. But important to be prepared. Right, and turn it off. Perfect. Excellent. Gassier than me after eating beans. More air. <laughs> it's burp, burp, burp. Every time I see these, I think, how do they not get dropped in the ocean? How do you keep track of them? They're such beautiful and important parts. How many times do these get lost? On this boat? Conveniently, the water tank cap is still intact. It's kind of nifty, but... What a dreamy evening. Everything was on board, we were ready to go. And this sea lion must have been chasing fish. That's a seal or a sea lion? I'm not Nature sure. is just so wonderful. The fact that we get to sit there and watch as the night turns to morning. Leaving Siren behind, my step van. Moving on to another tiny living situation. This is what the master Vibers looks like pre-trip. We've got our food stashed here and some bags. Here we have the head. It's a very cute wee space. Coming back out here we have the galley. Got the fridges plugged in and turned on some cilantro in the sink and the couch area. Then if I spin round, we have two berths. One here, which somebody is sleeping in, and here, which we're gonna fill with uh, luggage. And we're almost ready to go. This is a really cute little boat. I believe it's 27 feet. Um, I will tell you the name and model and put that out here on the screen when I find that out and memorize it. I am excited to go out on this boat for a couple of days and practice some sailing. It is a wee thing and there's three of us. Technically it could sleep four or five but that would be quite tight and even putting the amount of food that we want to take for this trip is a tight squeeze too. But we're gonna do it! Woohoo! I'm excited. We are bright and early ready to go. This is super cute. This will be part of an autopilot or a manual steering situation. We have two sails, a head sail, and then a furling sail up the front. And the sun is just up. Last night we came here and did a pack-in of all of our other stuff. Got familiar with some of the systems and the way the boat is set up. And over here, there was a sea lion playing and splashing and it was quite glorious. And I was definitely on a high. This morning I am sleepy and still waking up. Woohoo! We did it! Now we're gonna head south. So another thing we gotta watch. And out for we were off. Way. Heading towards the narrows. A passage that releases you from the harbour into the rest of the southern Gulf Islands. Passing a ferry. Our sailboat joined many other sailboats, all queuing. This is the lineup for going through Dodd Narrows. Timing this passage with the tide, there. making sure that you're going through on the correct direction is so important. Jeez, 
We're going to head in straight for a whirlpool. <laughs> and your boat can be pushed back and forth, side to side, by whirlpools, the current, and you're really, really close to shore at one point. It is a very narrow pass at its entrance. What this tugboat was doing, I have no clue. We're doing but it! But it sure made for extra wake and an exciting Woo! passage. <laughs> it was thrilling and the boat was performing well, moving fast for the boat its size. We got through boat. just fine in the capable hands of our captain, experienced with manning a tiller and as the boat was pushed back and forth in the swirling current, keeping us on track and off of the dangerous rocks. The sound of the waves now just rippling through. Look how glassy this water is. Not a breath of This is one of the few days we had this summer that the forest fire smoke came in and it made for some stunning skies. It's worth checking out. We sailed and motored and yeah. sailed and motors till we got to this beautiful little bay, a protected anchorage with some potential for diving. Like this will be this will be nice to dive along here. It's worth, worth trying. We're checking out. Feast. Boat food. Whoever said boat food had to be miserable. Yeah, right. Look at this fresh deliciousness. Did you get avocado or not? Did you get some yes. tomatoes? Yep. Take some. Then you can use a With fork a too if you like. Chili mayo and to easier. spicy tofu. The three musketeers. <laughs> Yay! I'm gonna take a still from this. I'm nervous now because <laughs> you're all watching me. Yeah, we are judging. Oh, uh, no, not for climbing down. Okay. Woohoo! So here we were, three sailors and freedivers, some experts, some not, all learning to work together, taking care of a boat, taking care of each other, and exploring the ocean. Keeping together for safety and enjoying each other's company. Most of all, enjoying the freshness of the ocean. It's summer here, so there is a little bit of murkiness. Algae has started to grow. Do you like my new hat? So, cleaning up the ocean, taking some trash back, after several attempts to get this pot into the boat, <laughs> it kept falling back in, I eventually got it up there, and then we headed off to the reef, 
not without stopping by some friendly crabs. Hi! Look at him. He's like, what are you doing? I'm about to have my lunch. Hiding behind this sea lettuce. Kelp crabs. They're really magnificent. They're almost translucent in their claws, but the colors of the ocean just mesmerize me. Could spend hours down here observing the different types of seaweed. Peeking under kelp fronds for red rock crab. This guy's obviously been digging in the sand. In summer, the ocean in some spots gets really murky. The visibility drops as the warmth promotes algae growth. It's deep here. We had found a straight oh, drop off really? wall. And on one side we had this rock wall and the other side blackness. Here you can kind of see this point where these plumos anemones are growing everywhere and then you look behind you and there's blackness and nothingness and it just drops down and down and down. I focused on these beautiful plants and this fish lurking in the darkness. We followed each other down seeing how deep we could go. This was probably about 10 Plumos anemones when out of the water are quite curious. They are floppy bodied creatures and have no rigid structure inside of them and they are suspended by the ocean. So when out of the water they look oh, really they funny. Look so sad. Really amusing. But we were oh, constantly what? mesmerized by the creatures, the life living here. He's hiding. Can't you see? The colors, the blueness, the amount of ochre stars. Oh, it's so beautiful. Just beautiful. I wanted to leave some of this stuff in without color grading so that you can see how the light dissipates, how it changes from the surface to below the surface. So if I drop down, you can see that this haziness, it turns kind of green, the algae growth gets thick, the light lessens, and then I get below it. Now I'm about 15 to 20 feet deep. You can still see the faint person coming down from the bottom, and then it drops and you can see the darkness below. The wall suddenly becomes way more visible, and here's my friend sneaking up on me. I'm completely oblivious at that point until... <gasps> Such a fright! That's a mean prank! Ah! Ah! I got such a fright! Ah! Did you see that? No! I Dude came like right in front of me, face to face, and I just went, Whoa! Yeah, Whoa! Yeah, That's I'm not safe, I'm sorry. No! Oh, give me a little bit all of my hair out. <laughs> Having recovered from losing all of my bubbles and getting a fright, we continue to dive down. At the top you can see the green murkiness fade away as we drop further down below it. Dropping off onto the sandy ledges that sit against this wall which drops easily more than 50 to 60 feet deep. We stayed around 30 feet. Moving along, watching, and then as you re resurface, you can see that we can barely see each other until we get near the surface again. It was full of plumos anemones, other anemones, and small fish, sea cucumbers, and starfish. Sandy in some places, home to so much life on the wall near the surface, the intertidal creatures waving us hello, this kelp crab, probably wondering who on earth has knocked on his door for supper. They were everywhere, and the colours are just magnificent. This guy looks like a little tuft. There's fish down there, can you see them? 
little schools of perch. They all had to jump down and have a look at this thing. Normally those Plumas and enemies have big palm-like fronds, but sometimes they get a fright and tuck themselves all inside of it. Despite the surface haziness, we were having the time of our lives, reveling in how much we enjoy nature. Being underwater where the mind quietens, where all you can focus on is the movement of your body, what you see around you, holding your breath, seeing how far you can go. Underwater you can hear a lot of things. I'm trying to repay the prank, but it didn't quite work. June is not to be surprised. We follow each other down for safety when the visibility is like this. Once you go below the surface, I wouldn't better see you when you're down 30 feet, so I follow. A few moments below, behind, and as you can see here, we're still in the haziness, and then suddenly we're going to pop out just below the level of all of the algae bloom. Are you ready? And there it is, quiet, crystal clear, and visibility for meters more. SV Ruth, a Catalina 27. A small but sturdy craft, well taken care of, very grateful to be able to take this little boat into some of the be most beautiful places in British Columbia. The Southern Gulf Islands house some of the most delightful swimming and sailing, giving her thanks by giving her a little bottom scrub, cleaning off the algae that still grows in these cold waters. like it's raining but it's not raining in certain spots yeah. it's just eerie and beautiful we were just diving on the other side of these islands and they were all exposed there wasn't any water covering it they're getting the tide is really high after we ro raised the anchor hauling it up by hand this boat doesn't have fancy electrical systems heading out back into the channel we headed for somewhere to anchor overnight a quieter spot protected from the winds <laughs> go go dip sounder Woo! this is where we were diving all along here where it drops from 5 to 20 to 50 it was so cool Ooh. oh my gosh that black is the drop off that's the wall yeah the boom bang, it, it holds the boom down. Yeah. And now Our trusty captain giving us some sailing lessons. Tips on navigating. This kind of boat is a great starting place to learn sailing. Not too many sails to take care of. And there's no winch on this, so you really <laughs> have to just pull. You, you Do you want me to come pull? Not too many lines, but today there wasn't much wind. We motor sailed a bunch, putting it up to help us along. Is there a reef there? Or is that just a, a, a line of wake? No, we're good. Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Okay, so if I go this way, yeah. and I start taking the wind on my side, okay, now we're at a, this is called a beam reach. It's sort of like coming across the, yeah. Oh, yeah, the beam. But you would then put that oh, this further out. To do it, try it. So you let that thing out. Now you see those little stringies on the sail? When they're flying like that on both sides, that's what you want. That's perfect. Yeah, I see you showed me them the fridges look. Yeah, exactly. Now that part, you keep tension on it and you cleat it. So you do that same knot, hold that and tension it with the same thing. Around and then figure it. Yeah, you got it. And then twice around. Nice. I love navigating a boat. Actually, let me show you a variation on that knot. There's <laughs> very little twice wind. Twice around is Holding on to the tiller, keeping an eye on the wind direction, <laughs> pointing the boat where we need to go. Okay, I can come find the chip for you. Finding ourselves tucked away in a very large and open protected harbour with many other boats. This is summer. British Columbia's sailing at its finest. A lot of pleasure boats. The little lone 
the little known land shark continues to circle, pacing ominously around the boat. As the sun sets, shone between these beautiful trees with a slight smoky haze of summer. It was perfect. And all of the salad stuff is homegrown, including the Thai basil and the eggs from a beautiful farm in Washington. Thank you. From one of my Patreons. That Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Can't be just egg and milk because it's very bland. Throw some beans in there. It's good. Okay, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> Look, we'll make it gourmet and put basil on top. Now it's looking more. Like a nice balance. That's nice. Okay. Oh, wait, there's some salsa in there. Mm. Basil and salsa. I think I'm just going to try it, but I might double wrap it because I don't trust the egg. You should not. I should not. <laughs> All right, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I did good. The camera pressure made me wrap it twice. <laughs> Is it good? What do they say? Nice and fresh, probably here. Mm, it's really good. With all Lettuce, that, basil, basil, beaten egg. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My lips are zipped. <laughs> An evening full of laughter, community, full hearts. Tired bodies from the swimming and exercise of the day. Minds full of dreams of sailing off into the sunset. Here we were, really living it. Sailing vessel Ruth has taken us here. Yeah. Pirate Cove as well. We just picked up some of these. Yeah, Pirate's Cove is, um, there's a lot of boats in there, so it might not be the best yeah. diving. Um, I would think about, you know, the time it takes to get really set good. the anchor, yeah. get yeah. geared up, yeah. and all that. So just think about that as well. Like, there's a transition, right, between yeah. motoring and sailing and uh, being set, and then there's food. So we might be. <laughs> Back in the ocean again. This is what we came for. Many dives, many ocean trips. This time we're swinging in the bay. This is a sandy bottom bay. So completely different life forms, completely different structures. And the sun was out casting beautiful rays. Mooring boys set amongst the sta sand, eelgrass and fish colonies everywhere, little schools and crab inhabitants on mooring buoys. Big crab! This bay had a few red rock crab. We said hello, peeked in at them as they hid in the sea lettuce. Boo. How are you doing, sir? Hey, hey. Moon jellies. And other jellyfish. I don't actually think that one's a moon jelly. The colors of the kelp just get me every time. The golden hues and the kelp crabs amongst all of the other sea life, all attached to a rope. There is micro ecosystems everywhere. Full of life. How many crabs can you count here? There's at least a dozen. This guy was curious and wanted to see what we were up to. If you look, some crabs dig holes.
We checked the anchor before leaving and found this guy nestled underneath. No crabs were harmed in the anchoring of this boat. As we set off. Okay, crew, we're ready to go through the pass. Woo! <laughs> See how swirly and whirly it'll be. We headed for another one of British Columbia's Southern Gulf Islands famous paths. And it looks like it's a little baby. It's a little pop. Gabriola Pass is a narrow spot between Mudge Island and Gabriola Island, and the current here moves fast. It is narrow and deep. The water funneling in. We made sure to time it for the tide, going the direction we wanted just before slack. Our boat is not fast, so we actually got overtaken a couple of times. You can see here as the current pushes the bow back and forth, side to side, as we hit the eddies and whirlpools through the pass. It's beautiful out here. We headed into Silver Bay to pick up some more gas. It had been a very windless weekend, not much, but this vessel has an outboard, not an inboard, so it's very economical on gas. Picking some up here, I saw some familiar friends. Do you recognize this boat? You can go Bye. see Ch Thunderchild and their channel over on Sailor Barry on YouTube. We make our way out and head north, this time exiting the bay from a different passage. The wind is picked up out here. We're outside, on the outside of the Gulf Islands, in between the mainland, where there's a little more wind. We put the sails up. These iconic red lighthouses and weather stations I've seen so many times from big ferries and it was really special to be coming close under sail power. This area of the Southern Gulf Islands has beautiful limestone cliffs and the thing I love about British Columbia in here is where the forest literally meets the sea. Can you imagine a wolf just standing there looking back at you from the rocks? Full hearts, eyes bathed in nature, blessed by the ocean, and tickled by the mischievous creatures that inhabit it. Like these two seals, there's another one under the dock, cleaning up after fishermen eating the salmon heads that have been discarded. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next week. Patreons, we have special updates every couple weeks. And you should all have received mail. If you're in the top two tiers of my Patreon, postcards and stickers are coming your way. Thanks so much for watching. Yeah, he's got the fish head from that guy who was cooking the fish. Oh, there we go. They smelled it. Okay, bye.